Yes, and um, uh, thank you for speaking to us, which we have to say from the onset that uh, it is at your request um, to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. And let's begin from the latest, because we've seen you in the city uh, going around and speaking to the people. Mm -hmm. You sound angry. Why are you angry? No, I'm not angry at all. Uh, I'm an easy guy. I went to talk to the people of Nairobi because um, they have been seeking me out for a while because they have had various challenges. And uh, at Wakulima Market, at Gekoba Market, at Muthuwa Market, <coughs> the traders at Nyamakema, the touts and drivers at uh, Tirum, they have been seeking me out mm -hmm. uh, over various challenges where they feel that they have not been treat treated very fairly by the county government of Nairobi. Right. And uh, I therefore went to listen to them because as a leader, when the people uh, whom you lead call upon you to listen to them, mm -hmm. that's so what good leadership is all about. So you are listening to them? Yes. What did they tell you? There are very many challenges at uh, Wakulima Market over forceful eviction to Kagudo Road mm -hmm. after having been there for almost 30 years without adequate public participation. And I think t two weeks ago, uh, there were attempts to forcibly evict them, and they are quite unhappy. And they wanted some intervention. Again, at uh, Mudua Market, they have had challenges uh, over health. Uh, there are hazardous challenges in terms mm -hmm. of garbage collection, in terms of lack of water, lack of sanitation, and they would want some intervention. Again, at the Koba Market, uh, there has been challenges about uh, threats to evict them from where they, are, where they have had their livelihoods for many years. And they, they, they wanted me to listen to them and try to see what intervention we can make. Basically, it yeah. was uh, a day for me to go and listen to these people because they have been looking for me for a while. But what will you do? The city has a governor who has explained that they're not necessarily evicting the people from that market. It's only that those that are excess need to move to a different location. What solution will you offer? Well, the fact that they are looking for me means they are not satisfied. Because if they were satisfied with what they have discussed with the governor, they do not have to look for me. Uh, people do not agitate where there is no cause. So the fact that they wanted to me to listen to them means that they have not, uh, their issues have not been addressed to their satisfaction. That's what I'm asking, because the city is under the leadership of the county government. What will you do as deputy president? Well, mine is uh, to profile the matter and bring it to their attention. Because it's important. You see what is happening. Why those people look for me is that uh, when the governor of the city of Nairobi was seeking for votes, yep. I held his hand and I went uh, and talked to those people. And uh, I asked them, mm -hmm. because they know me and they trust me, that you'll take care of them. And uh, once they feel that they have not been taken care of, they have come to me because I was guarantor to Governor Sakaja that he would take care of What me. does that mean, guarantor? Guarantor is like uh, when you go to a bank and you want to take a loan, yep. and uh, you don't have security, uh, somebody else can come and offer his title deed for you. I went because those are people uh, who speak my language and talk to them in my local language, yep. and they wanted an assurance. They say, this Johnson Sakaja, uh, we don't know him well. Do you know him well? I said, yes. Are you telling us that uh, if we give him our vote, he'll take care of our business interests? I said, yes. Mm -hmm. Are you giving us that assurance? I said, yes. So I gave that assurance, like all you do uh, when you are campaigning for somebody. And therefore, when probably they have felt that the governor has not treated them yep. well, as the guarantor of Governor Sakaja, they have sought me out and asked me questions, hard questions. Th that's what I'm asking. What are you going to do? Because well, there are separation the fact, of powers. The fact that we are discussing the matter with you here. D just hold on, uh, Deputy uh, President. The, the separation of roles between the national executive and the county ex executive is quite clear. You cannot supervise the county government, can I you? I am not pretending to supervise the county government. Advocacy is part of governance. The fact that the matter is being discussed here is good enough. It means the matter has gotten the right attention. I've seen the governor has written a, a big reply. Mm -hmm. That is good enough because if I had not gone there to listen to them, he yeah. would not uh, be replying to that matter. The fact that the matter has been brought to light is good enough. And that is what leadership is all about. Because at my level, I've given it high profile. Everybody knows there's a challenge. The governor knows there's a challenge. It's incumbent upon him now 
to deal with that challenge. Mm -hmm. But I have uh, undertaken, you know, my rightful role as guarantor to Governor Sakaja to those people by going there and give them an ear and listening okay. to them. Okay. And because of the publicity that has gone with the tour, the matter now is under discussion, which is a good beginning point. Okay. Interesting. Uh, and of course, we'll get back to that later on. But first, that was not the only issue that you were um, uh, talking about while in the city. Uh, you also said a few things that I want to reference uh, uh, just a little bit. Mimi suwezi kubali mambo ya uongo, ndiyo komano wananipiga vita, kama mkona shida na mimi kujeni munishtaki kwa nanchi. Who are you talking about? Um, Sabi, you know what is happening. And I had hoped probably before we get into that discussion, we'll discuss matters to do with what I do. And no, we'll we get there. We're just coming from the matters arising from the events that you had in the city. What I am saying is that yeah. uh, it is everybody's knowledge that I'm a truthful person. Mm -hmm. And many people are uncomfortable with that truth. When I raised that matter of Wakulima market, I was called all sorts of names, including being called a tribalist. Mm -hmm. Given the fact that majority of the people in that market uh, come from my community, matter beyond my control. And it was assumed that I'm talking because probably they come from my community, far from it. In that market, there are traders from all communities. Yeah. And when I bring these matters to light, many people have a problem with me. And the fact that I insist all the time that we honor pre-election pledges, there are things that we promise the people. Mm -hmm. We went there with Governor Sakaja and promised the people of that market that under our administration, their business can only flourish. It cannot become worse. We agreed that our administration will never oversee demolitions and evictions. Those traders were being evicted there uh, about 10 years ago in a very brutal manner. And I talked about it. And many people are uncomfortable with that. And what I'm saying is that uh, anybody who has a problem with my conduct, you go and report to me to my employer. My employer are the people of Kenya. These are the people who employed me. Go to them and say, well, regarding Gashagwa deputy president, is becoming a nuisance. He's complaining that you people are being harassed. We want to report him to you and ask him to shut up and he shouldn't keep on bickering and saying that you people are being mistreated. That's what I was saying. Those are my employers. You go and report me to them. You, you, you said that um, the people that trade in Wakulima market are not necessarily from one community. Mm. But then again, in some of those instances, you spoke in your mother tongue. Yes, Kikuyu, I, did. You. I did. And some are using that to say that you're being a tribal leader. I did. I spoke in my mother tongue. When I looked for votes for Governor Sakaja, I spoke in mother tongue. He didn't have a complaint. He was quite happy. He was all smiles. You see, Sam, communication is not what you say. It's being understood. You talk to a people, to a language that they understand better. When I was looking for votes for President William Ruto, uh -huh. for Governor Sakaja, in meetings where the majority are people from my community, I spoke in my mother tongue. I don't know why people are having a problem. Now that elections have been won, when I speak to people in the language, I used to speak to them when we were looking for votes. What was good then is still good today. But that time you were not deputy president. Now you are a national office. The but president, that does not... Uh, just hold on. The president is a symbol of authority. Mm. I mean, a symbol of unity in the mm. country. Mm. You are the deputy president, principal mm. assistant. Mm. Maybe you would be held to the same standard. Does it not bother your conscience? Not at all, because um, the fact that uh, I'm deputy president does not uh, diminish my heritage and where I come from, and my language. My language still remains intact. And Sam, let me tell you, communication is about being understood. It doesn't matter what language you speak. You speak the language even that people if, understand. Even if more than 40 communities of the Republic do not understand what you say. But they were not in that meeting. But they're hearing what, you. Uh, but they, the people you are addressing, we were addressing specific issues in Wakulima market. Those issues are specific to those people. You talk to them the language that they understand most so that you agree you and you understand You've just told me that the Wakulima market is not just the Kikuyu community. There are other communities I spoke, that trade there. I spoke 70% in Swahili. Yeah. And 30% I spoke in Kikuyu because the majority asked me to speak in Kikuyu. Mm -hmm. We have some mothers there who don't understand Kiswahili properly. We have some old men who have lived there in that market who have not lived in that market for a long time. 
And they told Dwala San, we want to hear what are you telling us? What assurance are you giving us? And when I went there, uh, Sam, I talked to them in my mother tongue for them to vote for Governor Sakaja. It cannot be when they are crying, when they are complaining. I cannot talk the same language. Okay. I talked to them when I was appealing to them to vote for him. You said, wale wanaopanga hii upuzi wa siharibu hii Kenya, hii mm. Kenya imekuwa na matatizo mengi, wakijaribu hiyo maneno, wa Kenya hawata kubali. What, what is being organized? Nini napangwa? Uh, you know there are many schemes that are going on every day. You have I seen meetings. You have seen meetings um, uh, of uh, trying to divide the people of Mount Kenya region. You have seen meetings of undermining the deputy president. You have seen people being called and being offered money to impeach the deputy president, to remove him from office, and all that nonsense that is going on. And I was saying, you see, some are elected by the people. And I asked the people directly uh, whether they have a problem with my leadership. And they said they don't have. I drew my money directly from the people. Uh, and what sorry. I was saying, yeah. what I was saying, anybody who has a problem with my leadership, anybody who has a problem with my conduct, yeah, mm -hmm. has every business to talk to my employer, the people of Kenya. Okay. Those are the people who make uh, decisions uh, over my conduct. Those are the people who can appraise my performance. Those are the people who can give an opinion as to what they think I'm doing, whether it's right or wrong. Okay. You're saying that uh, people have been offered money to remove you from office. How so? Uh, it's the worst kept secret in Kenya. I leave it alone. No, but you're talking about it. How much money has been offered? Well, uh, it's neither here nor there. It is. I think let's go for, for, for uh, more informative discussion. No, we will get there, Deputy President. We just want to dispense with this because you're the one who is saying it, that people are being offered money. Mm. Indeed, that's a crime, isn't it? Yes, of course it's a crime. So who's so offering the money? Uh, you know. No, I don't know. <laughs> you get to know. I don't know, Deputy President. You get to know. These things will come out as uh, in, the, in the fullness of time. Uh, these are things that will come out uh, in the public domain. Why would they want you out? I don't know. I don't know. What are they telling you? They'll tell us. They, when they want to get us out, they'll tell us. <laughs> they say that I'm high-headed. Yeah, that I am too people-centered. You know, uh, that I'm, you know, I'm listening to people too much. You know, that I am asking people to listen to what Kenyans are saying. I don't think it's a crime. I think uh, leadership mm -hmm. is about the people. And for you to be a good leader, you need to listen to the people. And I keep on listening to the people myself. And I keep on asking leaders, my fellow leaders, to listen to the people. And uh, I'll continue listening to the people. And that's what I was doing today. And I'm wiser this evening than I was in the morning when I left here. Mm -hmm. I've known many things. I am well informed. Because you must listen to your employer, because it's important that you listen to your employer. You're saying that people who have a problem with you should consult the people. In what forum? I mean, where is that in the Constitution? Consulting the people about leadership. So that they can take action against you. I mean, where, where do you place that in the well, Constitution? Well, I'm talking about leadership. I'm saying before you take any decision on any issue, on matters governance, on matters leadership, it's important that you listen to what the people are saying all the time. And that's what I do myself. I don't, even the Constitution, 2010 Constitution, you know, gives public participation as an integral part of our governance structure. Mm -hmm. That anything that affects the people drastically, you need to listen to them. You need to go to them. You have seen many things going to court and being thrown out for lack of adequate public participation. Mm -hmm. Public participation is part and parcel of our life in this country. And more so in matters leadership, in matters governance. Deputy President, who told you there was a plan to impeach you? I am a consumer of information. When you call people for meetings, most of them are our people. When you coerce them, you intimidate them, you offer them bribes, they come and report to us. And, uh, you know, what people must know is that uh, people have loyalties. And you may talk to many people and tell them what you want them to do, and you think that uh, you are keeping a very big secret. You know, we get to know these things when the meetings are going on or immediately after the meeting. You know, meetings have been held in Nyahururu. We know what was being discussed. Meetings have been held in Kitusuru, you know, in the house of a cabinet secretary. We know what was being discussed. 
We know the amount of money that exchanged hands. How much? All these it? things are in the public domain. How much? Never. Uh, don't worry. You, are you interested in the money yourself? Don't worry about. I don't think anybody will find any of that money. So you shouldn't be worried about the amount. But uh, all these things that are happening, people know and uh, some. No. Let, let nobody yeah. underestimate the intelligence of the Kenyan people. The Kenyan people are very intelligent people, and they have come of age. And as I listen to people today, even when I was going to explain to them what is happening, they said, no, don't even bother. We know. Mm. You know, Deputy President, the interesting bit is that you're revealing information, but halfway. You've just now revealed there's a cabinet secretary who hosted a meeting in Kitisuru. Who hosted the other meetings? Who organized them? Uh, some have told you. You, so you have seen the meetings yourself. I've just told you what was being discussed inside those meetings. I'm giving you info on what was going the on. Only you are aware of the meetings. The only meeting I know about is of the members of parliament that came out and said mm -hmm. that their leader is now... That was not the real issue. Mm -hmm. No, the real issue is what I'm telling you about. In that meeting it was yeah, discussed yeah. that they were going to be... The one that was held the whole night in Nyahururu. The whole night that, w that was what came out is not the real issue. The one of dividing the mountain in the two, the one of looking for another leader, that was not the issue. Uh -huh. The issue is how you can force a deputy president out of office. You know, that was the issue. It was the real issue that was being discussed in that meeting. And people know, and they reported to us, many people, most of them were coerced into that meeting. They were intimidated in that meeting. In fact, in the photograph, there were only 28. There were 35. And seven of them ran away because they didn't want to be photographed. The others were said to be 48, the balance from 35, 35 minus 48, I think it's about 15, were not even there. And most of them, the Honorable Mother Wagari, denied that she had not participated. The Honorable Munyo, uh, Munyoro, the MP for Kegumo, uh, you know, wrote a letter saying he was not part of it. There was a lot of coercion, there was a lot of intimidation, there was a lot of bribery. Question from who? Yeah, for those who had the capacity to, to coerce. Who are those? Pressurize. You can describe them without uh, naming. You know them. I don't know. Uh, well, Deputy President. you live, you uh, get, to, you get uh, some, you are an adult. You <laughs> have been around for a long time. I can confirm I am. Yes. But I don't have that information. <laughs> no. You do. You'll find out with the time. <coughs> and as these conversations are going, because you're saying that there are people who are refusing that they were part of that meeting, there are those that accuse you that you bully people, that you don't listen to the people, in your own county, home county that is, that is Neri, I think most of the members of parliament, if not all, have stepped away from you. Why is this? <laughs> I don't think, I don't bully anybody. I'm just truthful. I ask members of but parliament. Let's unpack that. What does truth I mean? I just ask the members of parliament to listen to the people, to listen to the ground. They call that bullying. It's not bullying. It's just being truthful. You know, you know people don't want to be told the truth. We have a problem in this country. People want to live a lie. Those members of parliament from my county are very good people. But they had a lot of coercion and intimidation. But it doesn't really matter. What matters is that the Nyeri, of, the Nyeri people, I was here the other day, are with me. 44 members of the county assembly are with me. The governor of Nyeri is with me. If the MPs want to be intimidated and be coerced to seem to fight me, that's up to them. They have a date with the people of Nyeri in the fullness of time. And I'm really not bothered by this. There are reports that, uh, Mr. Deputy President, you're working with opponents of sitting members of parliament to decampaign them ahead of the 2020 election. I am not working with any opponent of anybody. What happens, Sam, is that nature abhors vacuum. If I go to a meeting and a member of parliament doesn't turn up, another character who is interested in leadership turns up, you cannot chase him away. I am a people's person. Nature abhors vacuum. I have no People's candidate. Person. I have no candidate. I have not looked for anybody to ca campaign anybody. What I cannot do, for sure, when I go around the country, I cannot stop Kenyans to accompany me to wherever I am going. If a member of parliament is there, he or she is given a chance to say hello. If he is not there, and there is somebody else who wants to say hello, they are allowed to say hello. That's the way it goes. Yet, some of them claim that you're forcing them to attend meetings. I don't force Case anybody. in point, the member of parliament for Nyeri Town mm. once told me in studio that he had invited him to join you in a meeting and he excused himself saying he was committed elsewhere 
only for you to go and speak ill of him. I have no capacity to force anybody to attend my meeting. Meetings are voluntary. My meetings are very well attended because I have a huge following. Any clever politician would attend my meeting. If he or she chooses not to attend, I have nothing to do with it. And I don't complain about it. You know, I, all I say is that uh, if you want to come, my office, as a matter of courtesy, informs every elected leader of my tours around the country. The decision whether to attend or, no, or, or, whether to attend or not to attend is your decision as a leader. And I would not take offense for you not coming because I have nothing to do with you. You know, I had somebody saying that, uh, that I'm unhappy somebody has not come to accompany me to church. Sam, what you need in church is a priest, the choir, and the congregation, and the service is on. Whether a member of parliament is in church or not, that will never dilute the quality of the service. We go to church to listen to the sermon, to, to, to praise and worship. And if the church choir is present, mm -hmm. the congregation is present, you know? And in fact, the Bible says where two or three are gathered, that's where God is. That's all you need, two or three. I don't think I have any issue with anybody attending my meeting or not attending. I am not bothered, really. Okay. Uh, you, you, you're not bothered, you say. Yet, if, as you say, that there are plans to impeach you, if an impeachment motion makes its way to Parliament, you will need members of Parliament uh, to make a case for you, um, because it is them that vote. That is their decision, Sam. My, 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 my position is very, very clear. I was elected by the people of Kenya, okay? It is the people of Kenya who will confirm whether I want, I'm working well or not. But if members how, of parliament- How would they decide? If members of parliament yeah. are persuaded, intimidated, coerced to remove me from office, so be it. The matter is there. It's, it's that simple. It is really, there are no issues. One, I have no capacity to coerce any member of parliament. I have no capacity to intimidate any member of parliament. I have no bribe, money to bribe any member of parliament. If members of parliament want to impeach Deputy President Ragavi Gashawa, so be it. If they have issues with him that are constitutional, that meet the threshold, and they want to go ahead and send him home for whatever crimes he has committed, there's nothing Ragavi Gashawa can do about it. That is their purview. Yet, Deputy President, including the meeting that you attended today in, in the city, some of the members of parliament you're working with uh, were saying that uh, we have seen the dog, now we want to see the owner of the dog. What does that mean? I, you can ask the ones who made those statements. Uh, it has been repeated in several meetings that well, you attend. Well, I did not make those statements. That, those are questions you can ask those who made are those Are you statements. concerned that such kind of language is being used in your presence? Well, all kinds of languages I used in many meetings, including where I am personally abused. And that is what is happening. The country is in that mood of abuses, of tough talk, of campaigning, and uh, there's nothing I can do. I have not studied it. Does it bother you? It bothers me a lot. So what are you going to do about it? Well, uh, it's up to our boss to decide uh, what should be done because he is our party leader. He can call a PG and uh, bring down the political temperatures, tell the members of parliament to stop uh, attacking each other, ask those who accompany him who abuse the deputy president to stop because if he told them to stop, they'll stop. Ask them to stop these night meetings. If he told them to stop, they'll stop. By your boss, you mean the president? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he did, they'll stop. It's really him to provide leadership so that the country can go back to work. Some, we have many challenges as a country. We have promises that we give to the people of Kenya. We have stored projects that need to be completed. We have pending bills over 900 billion that we need to pay. We have housing program. We have health issues. We have uh, issues of business. It is unfortunate that the, 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 the country has been put in an election mood. You know, people are just talking about politics, how they impeach so-and-so, how so-and-so is useless, others are calling others snakes. There are all sorts of things that are going on. It's really upon the president of the Republic of Kenya, who is also our party leader, to put his house in order. What responsibility do you take for what's going on? Well, I have no responsibility because my team answers to what is going on because we are also politicians. And uh, if there is an onslaught against the deputy president, he too has people who support him. If you abuse him uh, in meetings, uh, the, the, the team that supports him will also answer. 
That's what happens because uh, he ca they cannot just keep quiet. So it's upon our boss, President William Ruto, to call his house to order. Have you spoken to the president? Yes, I've talked to the president several times. And, and I've asked him to call his house to order. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. here to do it, and I trust he'll do it because the atmosphere we are having, the environment we are having in the country is toxic. Kenyans are very unhappy about what is going on. How can people be meeting possibly at this time to discuss how to impeach a deputy president when the country needs a lot of work to be done, when we have roads that have stored for years, when we have people who cannot pay hospital bills, when we have challenges of water, when we have issues of a good business environment, how insensitive can we be to the Kenyan public that we can see to discuss on how to dispose of a deputy president who is in office when there are very many issues mm -hmm. of very great concern to the people of Kenya. I would rather, you know, if it were possible, all of us to agree to go back to factory settings and be very fair to the people of Kenya. We were just elected two years ago. We have not delivered on the promises that we give the people of Kenya. Yet we are back there now saying so and so is bad, talking about 2027. Even some people had started talking about 2032. People are looking for running mates. People are saying Gashago will not be this. So and so will be this. So and so can join with this. So and so. I mean, it's very unfair to the people of Kenya. It's extremely insensitive. Mm -hmm. And I would rather, if it is possible, uh, our boss president, William Ruto, to call his house to order. Okay. Because if he called his house to order, very decisively, this house will get into order. And people can go back to work. And everybody can do his work. You know, everybody has his, our work is well spread out. The president has his job to do. I have a job to assist him to deliver on the mandate. Members of parliament have work to do in terms of legislation and oversight. Governors have work to do in terms of running the counties. Everybody has work to do. Okay. We have just come from an election. Right. Kenyans are very irritated by what is going on. It's really not fair to the right. people of Kenya. And, and Deputy President, you're saying you'd rather if it were possible. For how long have you been trying to speak to the president to put the house in order. I don't want to go into the issue of discussing my, pres my boss as the president, but I have to do average the matter with him. I would rather we leave it there. I, I believe in the fullness of time, he'll appraise himself on the situation that is in the country. But you also express doubt when you say you'd rather if it were possible. Yeah, yeah. I have asked him to put his house in order. So I believe he'll put his house in order because what is going on Yep. It's not sustainable. Mm. It is not right. You know, it is very insulting to the people of Kenya. Really to get the country into the kind of toxic politics that is going on. The kind of insults on the altar that are okay. going on. You know, the kind of disrespect to the deputy president who is elected by the people of Kenya. You know, in front of the president, in front of the ch of church goers. What is going on is, is, is very, very unhealthy. It, it is not right. And, and, and it should come to an end. Okay. And as you say that, so how is your relationship with the president? My relationship with the president is okay. We have got a good working relationship. What does that mean? We work well. But you're asking him to do something because your career is on the line here and it's not happening. My career is not on the line. By the way, Sam, those things don't bother me. I'm a very simple guy. I just came here the other day. For 57 years, I was there doing well. If today members of parliament and senate decided that I go home, my home is a few meters from here. My clothes here will not even fit in a pickup. I just take and leave. It's not that. It's about the people of Kenya. It's not about impeaching Ricardo Gashagua. It's what yeah. it will do to the country in terms of political stability. Uh, He's a deputy president who is elected by 7.2 billion Kenyans who has a, a following of some one kind or another, and who have some people who believe in him. And we are having a country that is having challenges economically. We are having people feeling low, feeling down. And then you want to come and poison the political atmosphere. I don't think anybody wants to go into that direction. But if that's the direction whoever is arranging wants to go, so be it. Uh, there's nothing I can do. The matter is beyond my purview. 
you know, uh, let whoever wants to go ahead with it, go ahead with it. All we are doing ourselves is we'll inform the people of what is going on. And that I will do, by the way, mm -hmm. because I have a responsibility also, even I'm elected. And uh, going forward in the next few weeks, I'll be talking to my supporters and telling them what's going on, what is being planned, what is likely to happen, so that they are aware. You see, some, we are elected by the people. We have a responsibility to always inform your employer what is going on, so that they know, so that they are aware of what is going on, because people wonder what is going on. We have a responsibility as leaders to inform the people, because they are the ones who have given us this job. I was not given this job by the president. I was not given by members of parliament. The president nominated me and proposed me for confirmation by the people of Kenya. Mm -hmm. The people of Kenya, by a popular vote, confirmed President William Ruto's nominee Gadi as the right person for the job. Right. But the people who gave me this job are the people of Kenya. And therefore, if there are issues along the way that I find disturbing, that I find that they can cause political instability in this country, that I find they can be uh, <coughs> intrusive, and they can uh, disrupt our development agenda. They can disrupt our political stability as a country. I have a responsibility to go to the people who voted for me mm -hmm. and explain to them exactly what is happening. And that I'll do. And I have started today. And I'll be doing that along the way because uh, I am answerable to some people. I cannot just sit here in current. Meetings are going on at night. You know, people are being intimidated. People are being coerced, you know, to disrupt you know my term to stop me from doing my work and i just sit here i cannot i'll go to the people mm -hmm. and say good people you gave me the job are you happy with what i've done so far yes or no okay if you have a problem you want me to correct but my people this is what is being uh, is being uh, planned and it is when so who is planning it so when you see it happen please know this is what is going on Deputy President, I, I take note that you keep going back to that conversation about the meetings and the plans that are being made. Do you think the President knows about those meetings? Well, I don't know whether he knows, but many people in those meetings quote him, but he's not there. So I have no confirmation. How, how do you know they quote him? No, I, it is reported to me. They say, they, they invoke his name, that he is the one who has authorized those meetings. But since he's not in those meetings, I cannot accuse him. But... The truth of the matter is, the way we work as UDA, as Kenya Kwanzaa, yeah. any motion of impeachment in the National Assembly to remove the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya will never fight its way to the House unless the President approves. That's the way we work. Any contentious issue that comes to the National Assembly, the finance bill, this and that, the President will call a PG and say, this is our agenda. Can you go and prosecute it? So, even as people are planning, if that motion will ever find itself to the House, it will have to get the approval of President William Ruto. So it will be his motion because he'll have to approve it. So since we have not reached there, I don't want us to, to, to say anything about it. Okay. But that is the truth because we have a way we work. That is a very heavy matter. It okay. is not a matter that can be taken to the floor of the House and unless that, the President has given an order. And on that specific matter of alleged impeachment. Have you spoken to the president about it? I spoke to him once and he said he has not heard about it and he doesn't know about it and according to him he said it's foolish uh, and nobody can try something like that because it can destabilize the country. That's what he told me in his own words. And thereafter there was a meeting he called members of parliament and the matter uh, stepped down. The matter has come up again. I have not asked him again. I'll, when I get an opportunity, when he comes back, I'll raise the matter again with him. I'll say, Mr. President, a meeting was held here. This was said. A meeting was held here. This was said. What do you have to say about it? Mr. President, you want us to destabilize this country. Is it, are you part of it? Mm -hmm. What they are saying, the President will pronounce himself on the matter. But I want to say that there is no motion of impeachment against the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya that can fight itself on the floor of the house unless the president of the republic of kenya gives a nod okay. and again even if it was to go there nobody else has the capacity to push it through it's only the president himself there is nobody else who can get in 233 members of parliament it's only him who can push it through but that's another discussion for another day D -d don't, you think, don't yeah. you think that's a problem because the constitution of kenya has separation of powers between the executive the judiciary and the legislature are you admitting 
that parliament is controlled by the president. What I'm saying is Mata Kenya Kwanza UDA, serious contentious decisions are agreed in a PG convened by the president. You saw the finance bill, he's the one who was driving it. So that tells you the way our PG works. Anything contentious, anything with serious national implications will have to get the note of the president. And, and I understand the political party democracy, but are you comfortable that a house business must get a nod from the president, including a clause on oversighting the deputy president, in this case, invoking at Quran 150. Well, that is the reality of our Kenyan politics. Do that's you see a problem there? That is the reality that uh, all major decisions, all legislative agenda for our administration that needs to go to the National Assembly, the president normally does a lot of lobbying, sits with the members of parliament, takes them through, gives the points for or against and ask them to support. That has been the practice. And it did not start with the President William Ruto. It's as old as history. Because every government has a legislative agenda. So the President will call his PG and whip his members into a certain direction. You know, you sat in Parliament the previous, I mean, uh, the f uh, last term. Would it have been okay for President Uru Kenyatta to control how you are going to uh, make decisions in the House? Well, in Mata's government agenda, it is right because the party that is in power has a responsibility to ensure that the president and his administration succeeds. And they have a responsibility to support his legislative agenda. So it is important that once in a while, when there is important matters of government before the House, mm -hmm. the president will convene a meeting and persuade his members why they need to support that legislative agenda mm -hmm. and he will whip them into action. There's nothing wrong okay. with the president whipping his people in a certain direction. So, so when is the last time that you got instructions from the president? On? Executing your mandate in terms of assisting no, him? No, no, no. I have clear duties given by the president in executive order uh, number one of 2023. Yep. The president doesn't give me day-to-day -day instructions. I have many functions that I do, very many, by the way, and one of them is any other duties assigned by the president. That mm -hmm. is the one now is on day-to-day. -day. Mm -hmm. So know. when is the last time you got such kind of an assignment? Uh, I think uh, I, was in, uh, I was in Nyeri, mm -hmm. agricultural show last Friday to represent him. I was in Mombasa the other week to represent him in the agricultural show. Those are functions assigned to me by the president okay. on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. Oh, all right. And, and that weekend, uh, particularly on Sunday, you were expected at an AIPCA church event that the president was attending. Instead, we saw you at the Our Lady of Sorrows in Kirinyaga. Why didn't you show up for the other events? No. I think, I think uh, people talk from ignorance. There were two functions. Yes that the president was uh, expected to attend one in Kirinyaga and one in Nyeri, two mm -hmm. functions. The one mm -hmm. in his diary and align my diary with the president's diary. And therefore, I was in Kirinyaga to receive him. When I was in Kirinyaga, I was informed that he had changed and he would attend a function in Nairobi. So I purposed to attend the one in Kirinyaga and join him in Nyeri later. But the function I attended was uh, the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church Mass takes two hours and can never be interrupted. So I sat through the Mass. By the time the Mass was over, the President was already in Nyeri. Okay? So I could not leave the Mass halfway and go to, to Nyeri. So I decided now that uh, the President is already in Nyeri. Even if I left uh, Kirinyaga and tried to fly to Nyeri, I'll find his living. So it will not make sense. So I decided to stay in Kirinyaga and represent him. By the way, he was a chief guest in Kirinyaga, and there was even a plaque. So I sat through, and uh, even the presidential diaries were there. I sat there through, you know. But I think some people, uh, some mischievous people uh, in Nyeri, who works around the president, uh, put an empty chair, knowing very well I'm in another function, and took photographs just for mischief. You know, you know what happens in the presidency. There's a lot of mischief you, around. You know, you say mischief, but yeah. that's it was next to the president. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was there, but everybody, you know, the, every uh, my protocol people uh, uh, said I'm in Kirinyaga, so it was unnecessary to put a chair there that is empty when I'm not there. I was in Kirinyaga, and everybody knows I'm in Kirinyaga, so they should have removed the chair or get somebody else 
Yeah. Had you confirmed that you'd be in, in the Nyeri event? Yeah. Had you confirmed that you... Yes, I had, I had confirmed I'll be in Nyeri. So it is in order for them to put a chair No, no, but, I, but I, I, we give information that we cannot make it. The minute the president arrived before I left Kirinyaga, it was logistically not possible for me to go to Nyeri. We have information that um, part of the reason why I didn't go to Nyeri is because you got intel that uh, there are people who had been organized to heckle you. No, no, the intel is wrong. Nyeri is my home. Even if there was anything in Nyeri, how can I not go to my home? Nobody, for the avoidance of doubt, can heckle me in Nyeri, in the Mount Kenya region. Nobody. Nobody I attend all functions. Yeah. I attend all functions, and I don't need to organize anything. Okay. So that, it, that intel you have is wrong, is mischief. I was in a function in Kirinyaka, and everybody saw me, your people are there, throughout the mass. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why people want to decide for so, me. So who, who represented the message of the president at the, at the Kirinyaka mass? In terms of? The president's message. In terms of what? His contribution. There was no Harambe. We did not go for Harambe. What did the governor of Kirinyaga say? He said the president has given us some money, which is okay. There's no problem. Don't you think you should be the person to deliver such well, a message? Well, that's the decision of the president. I cannot decide for the president uh, what he wants to do with his money. That is his money. I have no right to ask the president to give me his money to take where he wants to take it. If the president was to send Anwar Ihoro to a meeting where I am with his money and not send me, that is his decision and we must respect it. Does and that show a good about. working relationship between the president and the I president? don't know. I don't read much out of it. You don't because I was, not going, I was not going for Harambe. I had not talked to the president, uh, so he did not send me. I just went for mass and I was there to receive him. But if he has decided to send somebody else with his money for a function, in my presence, that's a decision the president makes. Okay. It used to happen all the time during the time of Uhuru Kenyatta. Uh, all the time that was happening, the William Ruto as deputy president would be there. Somebody else would turn up with condolences and read when he's there. You know, I think this is and just... And there was a problem is, is that time. I, uh, if, if, there, if I don't know whether President William Ruto had a problem with it, I don't have a problem with it. He made it clear that there was a problem. If he had a problem with you it, actually spoke I, don't have it a, I don't have a problem with it myself. You don't have a problem with it. it. Okay, but you've also been missing in several functions, um, including even receiving the president as he came back from Germany. You have always gone to the airport to receive him. This time around, we didn't see you. We saw the interior cabinet secretary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what I have... What has happened, Sam, is that I always align my diary with that of the president all the time. And uh, as long as I am aware of his functions, I align accordingly. So sometimes, if I'm not aware, I'm not able to align because I also have my own program. What okay? does that mean? You are not aware he's coming back? I was not aware of the time. Okay, so what has happened is that I think, uh, I think uh, two days, I think about a week ago, okay. I think about a week ago, uh, <coughs> we have a diary for the president where I am there, my private secretary is there, my chief of staff is there, and all his issues are there, so we align. I think about a week ago, we were removed from that diary, you know, uh, so we are not able to follow exactly what is going on, so we are not able to align. But when we are informed of what is happening, like yesterday when I was in, uh, I went to, to Lamu yeah. to the pres uh, to, to, for the funeral of the deputy, deputy governor of Lamu, yeah. uh, who is a good friend of mine, and I am also in charge of intergovernmental relations, so matters devolution are my purview. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was there, uh, a letter came that uh, I am needed at State House for the swearing in of the Inspector General of Police, mm -hmm. but I was already in Lamu. Yeah. So they, it was not logistically possible for me to leave Lamu and, okay. uh, and, uh, and attend. So when I'm aware of where the president is, at what time, I'm always there. If I am not aware, then there's nothing I can do okay. about it. All right, Mr. Deputy President, we'll be taking a short break, but you'll come back to that particular part that you're talking about. You're no long, you no longer have the visibility of the diary, but of course you're watching the conversation with the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, that is Honorable Arugadi Gashagwa. We'll be back shortly with this conversation on so many other issues, including the new look government and what the mandate of the office of the deputy president is and what he has been doing about it. Stay tuned.